File 5. 5.1. 1. Hello, you're one of Peter's friends, aren't you? That's right. I'm Adrian. Hi, I'm Harry. Are you enjoying the party? Yes. So, what do you do for a living, Adrian? I'm a doctor. A doctor? Oh, that's good. Listen, I have a problem with my back. Could you have a look at it? I've got a pain just here. Uh, sorry, can you excuse me? I've just seen Peter over there and I want to wish him a happy birthday. 2. James, this is Sandra. Hi. Nice to meet you. Sandra's a teacher in secondary school. A teacher? Really? What a wonderful job. You're so lucky. Why lucky? Well, you have really long summer holidays. Yes, that's what people always say. Perhaps you would like to teach my class one day. When you teach teenagers all year, you need a long summer holiday. 3. Hello. We haven't met before, have we? No, I don't think so. I'm Catherine. I'm Peter's sister. Oh, hi. I'm Luke. I went to school with Peter. Ah, oh, Luke. You're the travel agent, aren't you? Yes, I am. Peter's told me all about you. Listen, can you recommend a cheap holiday? I'd like to go somewhere hot, and I want to go in August. But when I say cheap, I mean cheap. Oh, and I can't fly, because I'm terrified of flying. And I don't really like... Four. Deborah, can I introduce you to an old friend of mine, Lucy? Hi, Lucy. <laughs> nice to meet you. Lucy's my hairdresser. Ah, you're just the person I want to talk to, Lucy. What do you think of my colour? Well... No, come on, tell me the truth. Is it too blonde? Uh, no. I think it's fine. Are you sure? Uh, Lucy, what would you like to drink? Oh, um, a Diet Coke, please. Do you think my hair would look better shorter? Deborah, Lucy's not at work now. Oh, sorry. Five. Hi, I'm Andrea. Nice to meet you. Hello, my name's Simon. What do you do, Simon? No, don't tell me. Let me guess your job. Um, let me see. Um, you look like a <laughs> professional footballer. <laughs> no, um, I'm a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist? Oh, how fascinating. Simon, are you analysing me? Um, no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, um, Andrea, I need to go to the bathroom. Five point two. Dangerous. Decide. Difficult. Forget. Important. Interesting. Possible. Pretend. Promise. Remember. 5.3 Singer. Mm. Thing. Bring. Wrong. Language. Sitting. Watching. Thanks. Think. 5.4. Think. Drive. Study. Do. Go. Remember. Forget. Try. Ski. Write. Fly.
5.5. Good evening and welcome. In today's programme, we're going to talk about singing. In the studio, we have Martin, the director of a singing school in London, and Gemma, a student at Martin School. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Uh, first, Martin, can you tell us why is it a good idea for people to learn to sing? First, because singing makes you feel good. And secondly, because singing is very good for your health. Really? In what way? Well, when you learn to sing, you need to learn to breathe correctly. That's very important. And you also learn to stand and sit correctly. As a result, people who sing are often fitter and healthier than people who don't. Are your courses only for professional singers? No, not at all. They're for everybody. You don't need to have any experience of singing, and you don't need to be able to read music. So, how do your students learn to sing? They learn by listening and repeating. Singing well is really 95% listening. OK, Gemma, tell us about the course. How long did it last? Only one day, from ten in the morning to six in the evening. Could you already sing well before you started? <laughs> no, not well. But I have always liked singing. But I can't read music and I never thought I sang very well. So what happened on the course? Well, first we did a lot of listening and breathing exercises and we learnt some other interesting techniques. What sort of things? Well, for example, we learnt that it is easier to sing high notes if you sing with a surprised look on your face. Oh, really? Uh, could you show us? <laughs> well, I'll try. <laughs> and for those of you at home, I can promise you that Gemma looked very surprised. <laughs> were you happy with your progress? Absolutely. At the end of the day, we were singing in almost perfect harmony. It was amazing. In just one day, we really were much better. Uh, could you two give us a little demonstration? Uh, OK. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alas, my love, you do me wrong To cast me off discourteously 5.6 1. I have to wear a uniform at my school. 2. We mustn't be late. 3. Do we have to do an exam? 4. He doesn't have to work at weekends. 5. You must do your homework. 6. My sister has to travel a lot. 5.7 I arrived at Krakow Airport with Kasia, my guide. Test number one. I had to get a taxi to the hotel. I said to the taxi driver in Polish, to the Holiday Inn Hotel, please. Proszę do hotelu Holiday Inn. No problem. The driver understood me. But then he started talking to me in perfect English. I felt a bit stupid. We got to the hotel, checked in, and then we went to the hotel bar for test number two. A waitress came up to us and I said, Proszę piwo. That is, a beer, please. Then the waitress said something in Polish and I understood her. She said, a big or small beer. Big, I said. I was so happy that I could understand her. I really enjoyed that beer. Next, we went out into the street for test three, asking for directions. I decided to ask for directions to a chemist because I knew the word for chemist, apteka. I stopped a woman who looked friendly and I said in Polish, excuse me please, is there a chemist near here? No problem. But then she started talking really fast and pointing. I tried to listen for left or right or anything I could understand, but no, I couldn't understand anything. 
I was sure that Kasia was going to give me zero for this test. I was feeling less confident now. We went back to the hotel for test four. Making a phone call. Kasia gave me a phone number and told me to ask to speak to her friend. His name was Adam. I dialed the number. A woman answered the phone. Is Adam there? I said hopefully. Adam Anyema, she said. I understood that. Adam's not in. I wanted to say when will he be back, but I could only say when home. Kie di domu. And I didn't understand her answer, so I said thank you and goodbye very politely. Kasha smiled, so I thought, well, not bad. Finally, test five, asking the time. I knew this test was going to be very hard. Numbers in Polish are incredibly difficult, and I've always found telling the time is impossible. But I had a brilliant idea. I stopped a man in the street and said, excuse me, what's the time? I couldn't understand the answer, but I just said, sorry, can I see your watch, please? He showed it to me. 20 past seven. Perfect. How well did I do in the tests? Well, Kasia gave me five out of ten for language and eight for imagination. So, can you learn a language in a month? Not Polish, definitely.